Hello friends, welcome to the Tech Grant. Today we are going to talk about the sliding window implementation of the rate limiter. And in this particular video, I am going to code and show you how you can implement the sliding window. To understand how the sliding window algorithm works, do check out the video on the rate limiter that I have created previously. It's there in the playlist of high level design. And uh, before coming to this video, I highly recommend that you check out the other two video, which is on the token bucket and the leaky bucket. So once you are you have seen those video understood them then you come to this particular video. Let's jump into the code and see how we can modify those two code to work for sliding window. If you remember the sliding window concept then what we do in case of sliding window is keep track of the number of requests that is present in T to T minus some time that some time will be the configured time so suppose I want to limit the number of requests to 5 in the last 1 second. So it should be t to t minus 1 second. The number of requests will be equal to 5. So to implement this, what I am going to use is I am going to use a queue and this will be a, a concurrent queue. So we'll have a queue of integer and I will call it sliding window. Let me import this. Oops. Uh, then the second thing that we need is that window timing. So we need um, what the variable that we can name it to is uh, something like which defines the time uh, window. So I, I'm going to call it time window in seconds so once we have the time window in second uh, we need what is the bucket capacity so how many requests that we should be able to handle in this particular time frame so we'll have the bucket capacity so once we have these three we'll create the constructor for sliding window and uh, yeah before constructing i will just implement the rate limiter so which we created previously which is which you can see in the in my previous video so this is the rate limiter interface that we had created it has just one method so which will be used for granting access so once we have all these let us create the constructor and in constructor i want the capacity and the time frame and we will initialize our queue so we have the sliding window queue as concurrent to uh, we can use the concurrent linked queue in this particular case uh, because it will be a non-blocking queue and it will be thread safe also because we want all our component to be thread safe since the request can come in a multi-threaded environment so once we have all these in our constructor what we need here is that since we are dealing with the sliding window concept so before granting access what we need to check is if the sliding window that we have if the size of the window is less than my bucket capacity if it is less than my bucket capacity then it means that i still have a uh, room for new request so what i am going to do is in my sliding window i will simply offer that okay i will offer the current time that we have uh, basically the time at which the request came so for that what we can do is we can add a variable here which will be current time and this will give us system dot current time in millis and in rather than having this as integer let us have it as long so i don't want to add integer here in my queue i want to add the timestamp uh, uh, the timestamp at which the request came so let us make this long and here I will offer the timestamp in the queue and I will return from here saying true. Okay, we have a headroom for the new request. Now, this sliding window, how we will adjust this sliding window? Because in T minus whatever time window that we have, those if anything is beyond that time, we need to remove it from the queue because those are now not required. So I will create a method here, check and update queue and we'll implement this so 
in case of check and update and what we need to do is we need to pass this current time also so this will be long of current time so in our check and update queue what we need to do is first we will check that if this sliding window is empty since we don't have anything so we'll return from here we don't want to do anything otherwise we need to check uh, what is the uh, uh, I mean uh, since this queue will work on FIFO so the first time that is there which will be the tail of the queue which will which is ready to be popped out from the queue so what is the time that is currently present so I'll say long last time we can call it last time or we can say calculate time calculated time let's say calculated time so this is equal to the current time that we have minus the time which is ready to be popped out so sliding window dot peak we'll say peak and we'll divide it by thousand so that we get this calculated time in second so now we have the calculated time and what we can say that while this calculated time if it is greater than the current time frame that we have which is if this is greater than or even equal to uh, the time frame then you basically pop out that time so we'll say sliding window dot pole remove it from that particular time window and we'll use this here as well because it can happen that there are multiple time which has uh, expired so we need to remove everything from that particular queue now one thing we need to add here is we can add a check it can happen that we have already popped out everything so if this is already empty so we break from the loop and will come out so that is the complete implementation of this sliding window uh, class now similar to the other implementation which is uh, the token bucket and leaky bucket will create a user bucket creator and this user bucket creator will be exactly similar to the last one I'll just copy it from the leaky bucket and modify that so we don't want all these in place of leaky bucket we have sliding window the hash map holds good the map holds good and in place of leaky bucket we have sliding window and sliding window we need to give time so I'll say one second and bucket capacity of 10 so that is it and finally we will create our application so in our application class this again we can copy from the one we had used for leaky bucket or token one uh, we'll cancel it I don't want executor so this piece of code is nothing but we created the bucket for user id 1 and we are uh, we have created a thread pool of 12 since the bucket size that we have given here is of 10 and uh, the thread pool is of size 12 so 10 requests should be processed and 2 should be rejected since this will be all these will be submitted simultaneously so let us run this and once it has executed so we can see that 10 of the requests are processed and 2 of them has failed we can try one more thing we can reduce this bucket capacity to 5 now and uh, again run the same application so now only 5 requests will be accepted and rest also basically fail so if you see here 3 to 5 5 are accepted and rest all are rejected so this is one way which I found that it's a very simple way using uh, queue and working uh, with the concurrent queue uh, which is concurrent linked queue which is present in java to apply the sliding window concept so do let me know how you implemented the sliding window concept and time wise also i think this is a very efficient algorithm the reason being whenever we are pulling from the queue this is since we are pulling from the tail of the queue this operation will be very fast it will be constant time operation same goes for a decent so we are adding it on the head of the queue so this is also a constant time operation 
so complexity wise also this looks good to me do let me know if you find any flaw in this technique let me know how you implemented this particular sliding window rate limiter and do like and subscribe and share with others thank you for watching tech Grant.